Hello and welcome to the week five edition of the Monster Pod here on the lines.com. Matt Brown, Steven Anders. Joined this week, Ryan Noonan from four for four. Indianapolis Colts at the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is an expensive two and a half. We've already seen the threes pop and then get soaked and then get bought up. There's a couple of cheap threes out there as well in favor of the Jags. Yes, in favor of the Jags at home here over the Colts. 46 and a half to Oh, there's 45 and a half all the way to 46 and a half. So 45 and a half all the way to 46 and a half out there in the market. Of course, the big question here, Stephen, is, is it going to be Anthony Richardson? Is it going to be Joe Flacco? Um, Jonathan Taylor likely to miss this one. Ryan Kelly, two straight DNPs. Kenny Moore, straight two, two straight DNPs. Quiddy Pay, two straight DNPs for this Colts team. They come in with a bunch of injuries at all kinds of levels, all different places. Jacks had nine guys that were all limited on their injury report, but it seems like most of those guys are, are trending towards the right direction here. So it shouldn't be much of an issue on that side. I, I don't know about you, Steven, but I am more apt to want to play the Jags if Anthony Richardson plays because Anthony Richardson, the pocket passer, seems very appealing for me to play against. And if it's Flacco, I don't want any part of this and, Whatever, but like, you know, Anthony Richardson with his hip injury, and if he's going to roll him out there with his hip injury, I uh, I could be talked into backing an 0-4 team as a two-and-a-half point home favorite here over that. But again, we won't know until until probably game time. Yeah, I think it, for the casual sports bettors and football fans out there, it sounds strange to lay two-and-a-half with an 0-4 team. You know, I'm in a, a contest with a couple of guys – that I are I'm good friends with and um they they want to explain to them right because they're they're not as big into sports betting as I am and they're like why are the Jags favored they're 0 and 4 it's it's matchups right and the Jags have played a really tough schedule to this point as well this to me signals a big step down in class for Jacksonville in this game and Trevor Lawrence has had multiple games against this Gus Bradley defense that he's played well against and his splits overall in his career are better against zone defenses than they are man. So I do think we get a better Trevor Lawrence game with this matchup for starters and the Jags have played real defenses this year. I mean, they, they played, I know I'm down on the Browns a little bit, but it's still better than the Colts. They have played the bills. They've played the Texans. I mean, that's, that's a really tough schedule for Jacksonville if Jonathan Taylor is going to miss this game, I agree with you, Matt. I, it's it's strange to say, but I prefer the starting quarterback in this game. If it's Flacco and the Jags are going to have to cover more than a field goal for me to win my bet, I'm not interested yeah. anymore because the Jacksonville secondary is really bad as well. But if it's Anthony Richardson and I'm getting less than a field goal, I'm going to be interested in that. Haven't pulled the trigger yet, hoping to get a cheaper two and a half here. It's minus 120 as we're sitting here Friday morning. Um, so got to wait and see here, but it would be only Jacksonville for me if, if AR is starting. It's, it's wild to say, yeah, if the starting quarterback starts, I'm going to be on the other side of whatever, and if it's a backup, <laughs> then it'd be whatever. But, but Ryan, we look at this and one day, Anthony Richardson might be an accurate passer. He very, he, he might, I'm not going to write it off. I don't think that's going to happen, but maybe he will be. Um, that's not right now. That's not, that's not current version of Anthony Richardson. And so again, if the mobility is, is affected by this hip deal, and they're certainly less apt. I can only imagine if they're going to play him, they're not going to be calling a ton of quarterback runs and stuff and like all the different things like that. And so if that's the case, then, uh, you know, if he's going to have to sit back there and try to try to pass in the pocket, I think that that favors the Jags a lot. What say you? I'm going to kick it back to you, Mal. What do you think happens to the line if we have uh, like actual news here in terms of, you know, one way or the other? Because this is interesting. Like we definitely in different worlds in, in past, like, seasons and maybe in different situations, mm -hmm. this line wouldn't even be on the board, right? Because the quarterback uh, is such an impactful uh, piece to a handicap. Um, what do you think happens if we have Flacco announced as the starter? I don't know if it does anything. Okay. I'm curious. I, I don't know if it does anything. Well, maybe that's why yeah. it's up. I yeah. think, I think if it ever hit three and a half with Flacco, people would be interested in that. I yeah. think they'd get gobbled up. Yeah. I mean, if it yeah. does, if it gets to three and I, yeah, I mean, if it gets a three and a half, that's like Colts. Like you just you unload the clip, right? I mean, <laughs> but I, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I I don't know if is if it isn't kind of sort of baked in right now of a an injured Anthony Richardson or a Flacco, and like what that actually what the difference is right there in most people's power rating. What do you yeah. think, Ryan? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see, too, because I think the sentiment that you guys kind of laid out is the same. I think that there is probably more positive market sentiment behind Joe Flacco-led team than anything that we would have with, with Anthony Richardson. So uh, I think you would probably see some positive, um, yeah, you know, maybe it gets down to two, maybe mm-hmm. you even see some one and a halfs in the market. We get a little bit of positive Colts action just off the bump. Maybe it meets some resistance and comes right back to two and a half. But I think the news of it, uh, just I think maybe the upside against the beat up bad Jags, Jags secondary, right? They are you know rolling mm-hmm. out backups here all over the place too, uh, injuries along the front uh, and at the linebacker position. So there's just it's a bad defense to begin with, and they are also beat up too. And you know you could say the same for both sides. So that's kind of where I like to. Both teams have the ability to reach I think some ceiling in terms of pace of play and the way that these offenses and defenses interact with each other. I think there could be a lot of explosives in this game, uh, in the passing game, especially if it's a Flacco team. So my move, if it's a Flacco uh, start, is the over uh, 45 mm-hmm. and a half, 46 and a half, yeah. is 47 more of a key number yeah. there. Love I think that's that. probably where we go. If I'm being completely honest, I'm biased, and I maybe want a little bit of your guys' help because I'm not typically a hedge guy. Uh, I feel like I would, you know, just, mm-hmm. I got takes, lean into the takes. One of my favorite preseason futures was Jacksonville to start 0 and 5 at 15 to 1. I have that in the bag. Uh, so we are sitting on that this week. Well so done. do I take a little bit of Jacks? It was all schedule based. Mm-hmm. And my whole part of the handicap was we got a coin flip in week five. Basically, yeah. that's the, that's the game that kind of comes down to. I thought that they could, you know, definitely we're going to be dogs. Uh, and all those spots kind of Matt laid out. The schedule has been tough. So do I hedge a little bit with some Jacksonville stuff or do I just kind of lean into my 15 to 1? Take some of the over when we get Flacco announced and uh, just have a great day. Uh, you know, I always lean into the camp of like, if you can get yourself a steak dinner, like I, I, I always like to get myself a steak dinner whenever I have a yeah. nice juicy futures ticket. You know, I don't, I don't try to like hedge it to the point of getting rich or anything, but I'll hedge it to the point of like, you know what? I'm not covering this empty handed and I can go have a nice, uh, have a nice meal out of it. Yeah. My, my whole thing with, with this conversation and you know, this debate that we tend to have, just handicap the game, right, Ryan? And mm-hmm. where do you come out on the handicap? And if it comes out on the 15 to 1 ticket side, then I'd be I'd be willing to take on more risk, right? If I think I got the wrong side in the game, I think the Jags are going to win this game, then then yeah, I might decide and it's personal choice obviously with every better how much they want to hedge it, right? If, whether it's all the way or just a little bit like Max said. So, um that's kind of how I look at it. If I'm really confident in the handicap, then I'll, I'm more likely to let it ride. But you know, you've heard my opinion. What I a, think if it's what a ticket it's though. A-R. What a what a what yeah, a what a ticket, ticket and what a what a thought there on that. Uh, no Colts receiving props listed yet, as you would <laughs> imagine. I mean, obviously, if if it is Flacco, I'm coming in to see how low I can get some numbers on some guys, you know, and I think that that would be super super interesting. But again, nothing listed as of the time of this recording because. They ain't going to give us that. They're not going to give us that at all. I mean, yeah, Matt, to Ryan's point about the over, if it's Flacco, they had the lead for a lot of that game when he was in there. And typically that's when Steichen has said, you run to win the game when you have the lead. He was throwing it a lot with Flacco despite mm-hmm. having the lead. I mean, he had 26 pass attempts. So yeah. I do like the overlook there because they're going to be far more willing to throw it when, when Flacco's in the game. Also, and Trey Sermon. Both defenses are bad, right? And you got Trey Sermon probably instead of Jonathan Taylor, right? Is Trey Sermon the guy right, you right. want to like melt the clock with? Like, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, everything you do, absolutely free. Do appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up. Let us know in the comment section. Uh, Steven will go in. He'll let you. He'll read them. Like, like what, what did we what did we get right? What did we get wrong? Let us know. And, of course, you want to continue the discussion. Upper right-hand corner of the lines.com is the Discord. You can go in there, chat football, every single sport, actually, all year around. If you've not checked out 444 yet, head over to 444. Go in. You can use it not only for your sports betting. You can use it for your uh, fantasy sports and your DFS and everything like that. So be sure, 444.com. Thanks, Ryan, for being with us as well. For Steven, I'm Matt. Good luck on all your week five bets.